Last week's call for a red week in the markets was wrong. Both Nasdaq and Dow Jones up more than 2%. Head and shoulder formation in Tesla kicked in. Tesla actually hit the $240 target, but now moving up, what is next? And the auto trader, shark trader, is doing good. After a few bug fixes, fixing the automatic stop loss, trailing stop loss, it's back on track. This and much more in this week's podcast. You're listening to StockInvest.us podcast, Trading Tips with Jim. And we are into week 27. This week will be a bit special week. Tomorrow is um, US uh, National Day the 4th of July and even today is a shortened trading day so it'll be a short week it has huge momentum from last week there seems to be no end into the optimism on Thursday and Friday there will come uh, a few economic uh, numbers but you heard me say over and again that uh, I believe there will be a recession and that it will be deep but the job numbers, they keep coming in much better than what I expect and most experts expect. That is a good sign indeed, because it can make for a much more soft landing. At some point, all the interest rate kicks, uh, interest rate hikes will kick in. Uh, they usually do, and as I said in a few podcasts back, it takes somewhere from 12 to 18 months usually before you start to see the effect of hiking interest rates. And the uh, Fed will, uh, during the week, give a small indication what they think about future hikes. And future hikes will come because inflation is not going away anywhere. And the question is, where do all the money come from that currently is being poured into the market. We know that uh, most people have stretched the limit of their credit cards. The credit card debt is insane high. We know that uh, the rental market, the housing market for uh, certain types of uh, real estate properties are on a downturn while some are still holding strong. So where are all the money coming from? Well, uh, many argue that it's still left over from all the money printing back in COVID times because uh, governments used uh, COVID to really print up uh, tons of money, trillions of dollars actually, and these money are still circulating in to the market. And I read a few very nice articles this uh, morning before making the podcast. I love uh, to read as much as I can to try to be a little bit prepared about the latest news in the market. And anyone following know that I recommend you to scan through the news, just even the headlines, because you will get the major pictures. And some of them are, you know, that of because of uh, lifting the debt, much more money will be pulled into the market and that can only fuel stock markets as um, feds will have to buy uh, up uh, more uh, junk bonds etc this money will flow in to the stock market we will see uh, whatever uh, will be if you read other news, you can read that uh, now also the banking sector are starting to lay off a lot of people. Have you been reading this in all type of court results that they are cutting their staff, but still unemployment rate is at a very low place. And on Thursday, there will be job numbers as I said, and I expected that these will come in somewhat good. And personally, I do think that as is like the markets are now, job numbers has to come in very bad to scare uh, the market if job numbers uh, gets in a bit weaker than expected that can fuel the market because market then expect for a soft landing if the job numbers come in a little bit stronger than expected well we had that case for many months already so market is a little bit uh, aware and expecting that there is a tolerance for these numbers as we speak 
So what are the things that can uh, push the market uh, downwards? Because right now it's a really bullish market. And my uh, statement back, I think it was in January, February, I said that I believe 27th of May will be the end of the bull market. Uh, so the end of the beer market and the beginning of the bull market, the confirmed bull market and so forth. It seems to that prediction will be wrong while it may look like my call for recession may be off. But Germany is in the recession and several other countries are in the recession and it's a little bit about how numbers are created. But we will see GDP numbers came in uh, better than expected. So it's just a waiting game to see what will be correct. But as I told you over and over again, e, uh, you have to do understand that the stock market has already calculated in a certain amount of future expectations. And the stock market has indeed uh, prepared for a recession. So there is a lot of of uh, things already discounted into the prices. The question is, are the stock prices still very cheap? Uh, they may very well be cheap if market gets back on track, uh, meaning uh, general markets uh, across Europe that we see some of these trade conflicts which are building up uh, between China and US start to ease uh, if uh, the war in Ukraine do not escalate anymore and if we avoid Taiwan conflict, well, it may very well be that we are heading in to strong, long greens in the stock market. But this is trading. You do never know how it will be. The best thing you can do is uh, try to play your cards as good as you can. And one of the tools using that is a risk assessment. You always assess the risk and you use uh, this to determine how much money you at any given time invest in to the market. In each uh, of these podcasts, I used to tell you about the stock invest signals. We analyze all the stocks at US uh, and uh, I think it's more than 20 other markets in the world. So combine some 26,000 stocks all over, give them a buy, sell or hold ranking. And based on this, we can tell how many give buy signal at any given time for each market. This is an excellent tool to say something about the temperature. It's an indicator and horse indicator. And as I said, two weeks ago, the market was way too high. You could just expect a correction down, which we had. Uh, but last week I was a bit off. I said the number was a lot cooler. Uh, they had fallen a bit from the week before, but that it was uh, not enough in my opinion, uh, and I gave that as a reasoning why I thought it would be a red week. But market is, in this, in the, as I said, in a bullish uh, trend, pushing upwards. Numbers, of course, because of last week's uh, good um, gains. Nasdaq up 2.19% to be exact, and Dow Jones up 202%. Nasdaq is again closing in on 14,000, currently sitting at 13,788 points, while Dow Jones is 34,408 points, both pushing upwards to 14,000 and 35,000. And we are above the expectations even from uh, major, major brokers uh, across the US who said that they thought Dow Jones would stay around 34,500 for the year. So we have really pushed hard lately. Across all boards, there is 29% buy signals. If you go to Nasdaq, there is 35% buy signals. And when I said last time that we would have to have a small correction, it was 36%. So again, we are very high. And if you go to New York Stock Exchange, it's 43% buy signals. But as I told you, I've seen these things before. When numbers are high, they can just push higher. It's like being overbought. It can just continue upwards so uh, in all fairness from statistics there is a high chance that we will have a red week that we will have a correction especially on new york stock exchange uh, and the uh, part of uh, the nasdaq exchange especially related to the tech stocks uh, but at the same time they can just fueled up and being a shortened trading week can make that perfect scenario for a crazy week where we have a strong week this week and a very red week the following week. 
London also up from 12 to 17. Uh, as I told you last week, London was in for a good week. Had to happen when the buy signals was that low. While Tokyo is up at 45. And that means there are some red skies in Tokyo. They will soon head for a lateral correction. Chess in China is 32% up from 18. So it's also a good week in Chess in China, who has been struggling a little bit with the direction of the economy but latest economic numbers from china indicating that the growth still is there the huge thing about china now is the tension with us and possible trade blockades some us uh, senators uh, etc was arguing from blocking sales of important technology to China again we are speaking AI graphic cards uh, and the semiconductor in semiconductor industry in general China uh, gave a strict uh, warning uh, if that happens there will be huge consequences we will see how that will play out getting back to the signals uh, as I say they are very high especially for uh, Tokyo uh, and the New York Stock Exchange uh, also somewhat from Nasdaq but markets can just continue to push upwards. You do not know for sure. There will be quarter results coming in and um, they will be interesting. We are slowly starting now to increase the pace. I wouldn't say there is any real uh, special uh, companies to follow this week for quarter results, but now we are back on track with results and some of these results will shock the market, but I do not see any of them this week the one thing uh, you should follow in the quarter results uh, is um, their future expectations what do they actually say about the future we know that the ceos has to be as positive as possible but if you can uh, see a downgrade in optimism from the previous quarter results, it just means that they are expecting bad quarters it will be very very interesting to follow oil which we follow is up one dollar to seventy dollar holding somewhat okay and uh, I noticed that Buffett is again, uh, Buffett is again back uh, trading in oil shares. And as I told you, I think oil at current level holds a very good opportunity for future gains. And I think they will hold good if market starts to tank a little bit. And when uh, you think that I might be positive, I say that numbers are way too high, you have to understand that uh, it is natural when something goes up, there will be a reaction back. You just want that reaction back to be smaller than the upturn because that will define future upturns. So there's nothing in the numbers, even though I sound a little bit negative, indicating that we will have some sort of a real crash. It's just natural correction downwards within what currently is an upward trend at Nasdaq. Gold $1,923 down $15 from last week and good stock markets usually hold gold a little bit down. Uh, gold is like a safe haven. When people feel uh, worried about future they invest into gold but I still hold the $2,500 target for gold. 10 year treasury yield when this number goes up the stock market goes down was up 006 last week of 1.57 percent to 382 heading for four and this is based on what fed said that we will have to increase interest rates more and uh, we will see how this will affect uh, labor market and housing market office market is struggling uh, currently and some speculate that this can cause extreme losses into companies like JP Morgan which is highly exposed in that market and these high high exposures can cause uh, more more uh, banks fail and even some of the biggest though there was a stress test last week done on the major banks could cause for some more uh, mayhem in the banking sector. I told you uh, last week that uh, there was a head and shoulder uh, pattern in Tesla indicating that Tesla should fall down to 240. Tesla did fall down to 240, 240, 35 or something from 260 to 235. Had to come 
and the next reaction up would be an up turn upwards to a minimum of 262 dollars currently uh, tesla is at these levels the question is, will it break further up and i had a quick look at data before uh, going uh, to make the podcast and i noticed that currently as we speak um, the, fu the futures and pre-trading in um, ev stocks is up quite a much there are some numbers coming in and the pre-trade is for sure very strong will it be uh, long lived or will it just be the last push because some of these stocks have now moved up quite much and that brings us back three four podcasts ago when i said now you should buy ev stocks because everything is pointing for a strong upturn and personally i had the pleasure of peeing in ev very good call the question is will it now continue neo is again pushing up above 10. yes i think so but be prepared for a possible short-term reaction back if it happens it will be a good uh, time to buy in my opinion the reason for this is that the green technology is here to stay and with the debt increased and being pushing for green technology you can expect much more money being poured into this industry either by subsidies directly in the ev uh, industry we know that you had uh, uh, direct subsidies if you buy ev car you get a certain amount of subsidies etc so you have the direct but there is also a lot of indirect uh, subsidies into building power uh, more power stations across uh, the nations and not only us but also europe and other incentives to make you buy electrical vehicles right now there is a price war in the industry and that can hurt uh, the ev cars the profit margins for sure but i think investors may be willing to take that risk last week we saw that uh, i think it was saudi arabia uh, that uh, had investors going into neo fueling up the war chest of neo by 700 million dollars uh, if i'm not mistaken will tesla go above the neckline at 262 well pre-trade says that it will and what do happen with a pattern like head and shoulder formation well that will uh, if the neckline is broken you can expect further rise to 300 at least to the top of the previous formation such interesting to see i love formations and i love uh, how accurate they are in most cases this was classic dead on uh, retraction down to 240 very good if you were in the short position uh, utilizing that fall now it will be so exciting to see what happens as 262 is pushing is the pre-trade currently just way too much will it just open up and then just start to fall i cannot tell for sure i have seen everything in the markets my bet for, uh, is for that we will have a strong uh, opening in ev and then maybe some profit security we will see i'm not sure it will be long lived but the long future is very good time to be in ev in my opinion so that were the news uh, for that short trading week um, ahead of us what about the shark trader in the last few podcasts i've been showing you my auto trading boot which i am currently building um, and i'm so happy to say that uh, last week made for some more progress now maybe you're a new listener uh, so i sh just have to give a small uh, recap so stay with me if you are one of my regular followers but just less a small small recap now why do i build an auto training boot first off uh, uh, i do not want to spend too much time trading as i told you over again there is more to life than just trading and trading is really hard i studied insane amount of statistics and uh, you have to be above like the one percent uh, top traders to really do it in the market and uh, frankly i don't think that i am among that one top percent i am fairly good when i have my days i can be insane good i can be a real killer in the markets if my mind uh, and my attitude is at the right place 
I can score one score after the other uh, and just rake in money. But I suffer from one huge uh, mistake. Emotional. That is if my emotions uh, are not correct, uh, that uh, I get cluttered with bad, you may call it bad energy, but I'm caught in a bad um, position. Could be from anything else, but uh, trading, I start to make slight uh, mistakes and mistakes cost. I use stop loss to, to avoid the big losses, and that is why I always told you to use stop losses. But that thing not being uh, totally... Uh, cool every time you turn on the computer i'm not able currently to turn that into my benefit when i have real bad days i do still make bad choices and uh, i have my personal reasons why i do not want to trade 24 7 first in the european market then in the u.s markets i love so many other things as you know i love metal detecting i'm out with my deck detector when i can finding things enjoying life uh, and on top of that, there is uh, family and a lot of other things where I want to spend much uh, or most of my time. Trading, uh, I do because I do love it uh, and I do make money on it, Build, uh, building good part of fortune on it. And I continue to do it and will do it also in the future. Now. That was the background uh, for this purpose, being able to uh, auto trade using my knowledge to trade and building a trading boot. Besides this, for uh, uh, almost as long as I can uh, remember, I've been fiddling around uh, with signal, signal detection, formations, been working professionally with these things and turned it into codes, uh, codes that actually seem to work very well especially on signal generation etc you see much of these things at stock invest when you go there and besides this i have several uh, other pages which i use as my own playing ground but i play with my latest and newest ids one of these is getagraph.com here i'm producing a new set of signals it's minute based and based on these signals i built an auto trading boot which is trading automatically it's connected up towards uh, a broker called alpaca alpaca offers uh, trading um, uh, fee-less trading meaning there is no fees actually on the trading and when you do auto trading you have you can make take advantage of 0.2 percent gain or uh, more so uh, that is uh, the trading boot uh, currently doing it is working these it is working these smaller profits every day up to several times per day it is buying and selling by itself using signals which i made uh, and everything i also made the reason i made everything and not using uh, other tools is because i want total control of everything and on top of this there is one thing i always wanted and that is to help you the common investor to make better decisions i am building this tool with the idea that you will be able to use it yourself if you want but let's have a quick look how are we doing at megashark live trading you have to go to getagraph.com up in the menu you'll find something called shark and sorry if the mobile view is not what you um, expect i didn't put much emph emphasis on the mobile version yet i will clean it up during the week uh, but <laughs> this is just a project which i can dedicate a few hours now and then and when i do it i prioritize other things if you click on it, you will see a copy of my account. So this is actual trading going on. Uh, nothing of this is pre-made. Everything is ticking live. It says welcome to uh, Jim's account. Again, I'm currently watching on uh, Norwegian, but that is because I'm Norwegian. Let's change the language to English. You can select between eight different languages and I hope to put uh, Hindu very soon for followers from India so you also can see it what you see very first is uh, you will see my latest updates the things that I have done and uh, the very latest I did was before the weekend I did some restructions of some 
classes to make this auto trading boot uh, more convenient. It's a work in progress, so you change a little bit and the classes and how you deal with code is one of them. When I get everything exactly like I want it to be, when I think that it has the level where I think it uh, should uh, have, where it should be, I will hand this over to real uh, programmers uh, uh, to really build up how it should be. And then we are talking uh, a lot of different things with socket live prices. Currently, it's uh, not live prices. Uh, you have to click refresh every time you want uh, a new price. Uh, and all of this is, it is some work uh, to do. It's not extremely hard if you take the time to do it. But every time you change this, you have to change the rest of the code. And currently I'm working on the signals and the boot itself. So all these things will come. You are at my account, you're looking and you can look at the small video I made, which shows the admin panel where you actually uh, do your settings. I recommend you to do that. Just watch the video. It takes one minute and 40 seconds or something. And it will just show you very simply how easy the admin panel are. Currently, you cannot log in. Uh, to this trader, I will let everyone know when it is open for external testing. So far, it's me and one of my colleagues testing uh, the account. Now, uh, how did I do? Well, what I did is uh, I opened uh, the account, run a, a paper trading account for testing purposes. Then I filled uh, some actual money into it. And I'm running two versions, one paper versions, one real uh, version. I put uh, for three weeks, I only allowed uh, the boot to trade for 10,000. No matter what, it could never trade above 10,000. I have five stocks uh, which I allowed for trading. I set up uh, Nvidia, Tesla, Lucid, uh, Microsoft, and Apple, I believe it is. Uh, and they are allowed to trade for 2,000 in each of these stocks. So whenever a buy signal is firing, the system is buying the stocks. And um, last two weeks, I was struggling a little bit with stop losses because they use trailing stop loss. The stop loss only follow the price up. The thing when uh, you do these things is that uh, trailing stop loss is a sell order. So first I had to uh, effectuate the real order and then put on the trailing stop loss. So that was a little hassle back and forth. When I thought it was working, it was not working as it should because sometimes orders are not bought in full, meaning they are bought partially. It might be uh, one if you buy seven stocks in Tesla, for instance, so it might buy one stock, then it buys uh, the next six, or it buy one one and the next five in batches, depending on what batches is. That caused the trailing stop loss to be only set by one stock. And if a stock is sold by the system, meaning that there is a sell signal coming in, you have to cancel the orders, etc. So there was a little bit back and forth uh, with trailing stop loss. That made, uh, I think it was fixed Tuesday, I finally got it all correct and it was triggering as it was because it's doing very, very good trades finding the buy signals exactly when it uh, is and it has two conditions to sell it sells if there is a sell signal arrived from the system or if the stop loss uh, kicks in and sometimes uh, stocks start to fall could be a sudden news in the market something stocks start to drop and then you want to cut your losses and if you follow this thing and you were watching then you saw how bad that went for lucid which dropped i think it was seven eight percent in one single row cost a huge loss uh, otherwise, the return would be interesting and very shortly we will get to the return. Currently, you can see there is two trades open from uh, Friday. It's Nvidia and Tesla and currently today these two, uh, which is invested by a total of $3,600. As I said, a maximum of 2000 in each. Try to buy the uh, exact lot so it doesn't split up uh, uh, the quantity. Currently, these two are sitting with 127% profit, uh, $127 so far today. And on 3000, well, that should make for a happy 5-6% actually so far today. But as I said, uh, Tesla especially is up. And if you look at Tesla, you can see that Tesla is currently up $110 with 6% profit uh, so far. 
This will change a bit during the day uh, and when trading started, even before trading started, these positions may be closed, but you will see, you can follow it. Further down the line, um, you can uh, watch the settlement notes, you can watch the unfilled orders. The unfilled orders are orders that either are waiting to be bought or sold. And currently you can see the trailing stop losses for Nibida and Tesla in for the closed trades, uh, there is, uh, you can watch all of them, you can search on them and look on them uh, and see how it did. Uh, so so that's, that's how it goes. At the bottom there is a trade summary and we will spend the last few minutes on this thing. So how did it actually go? Now, uh, I noticed that I use a percent showing how much percent has been returned. You have to understand that this return is based on the total buys. As I, I told you, I only allow Microsoft to be bought for $2,000 at the time. And currently there has been uh, bought for $30,000, should be some 15 trades and 30,000 in sales. So that should be around 15 trades. Uh, on these 15 trades, um, the system has made almost $275. So that would be, uh, if you only use 2000, that would be more uh, than 10% profit on this, very close to 15, actually percent profit. V extremely happy about this. Uh, everything before I made the boot was showing that it was going to work. Uh, and so nice to see that it actually worked. You can see that I have something called realized percent at 0.9%, but that is just the percent made on the total amount of buy and sells. I will change this as it is a bit confusing. But if you do understand, you could only buy for 2000 uh, each time in Microsoft. Uh, so 15 trades amount to $13,000, sometimes two trades per day, sometimes only one. Uh, currently profit of $274 in average. The trade has lasted 261 minutes. That would make for six hours plus, six and a half hours, I guess. Uh, sorry, four and a half hours. So there you go. Apple, uh, $232 in profit, uh, less than 200 minutes. Lucid, sadly, that one is currently sitting at the loss. I've lost $101 in my Lucid trade, but it was mainly done in one very bad trade where the stop loss were not kicked in. Nivida made $196, Tesla made $104. Also, Tesla was one of them uh, hit by a bad stop loss not working. But currently, I have generated $700 in profit. So nice just to sit there and watch and currently unrealized today is $136 almost. Now you might not watch this as a video presentation on YouTube uh, or Spotify. You might be listening uh, on pure audio. Maybe you are sitting there fishing next to a nice lake. You are out walking or you are on the treadmill. I don't know. But when you have the chance, you can go to getagraph.com and check. And please comment uh, uh, on the videos if you have any questions. And I will answer all of them as best as I can. So what are the things that I will work on uh, during this and next week? I will continue to clean up uh, code that is very, very important uh, because uh, that uh, when you have your code very good, it's easier to add a uh, new extension. There is tons of exten extensions that I will add. I added uh, email notification. Now email you will get, if you are trading on real account, you will get uh, trade notifications every time from Alpaca. And I will, yes, I will make APIs for other brokers as well. Currently starting with Alpaca, that was the easiest to start with. So I started with them, but later I will make also for all the others i uh but if you are on a paper trading account you are not able to get notifications i built a notification system for this now i just need to uh, uh, 
uh, fix the part where you get if it's cut by stop loss that you get an email notification as well for this and i was thinking that i maybe should just build an app on top of this for easier notifications straight into your app every time trades are made or uh, open the bigger picture the really bigger picture uh, is that 5000 stocks uh, get signals every minute among these are some real gems i know exactly where they are i know how to find them and that is the biggest part that i will work on is because i want to make that very easy just click trade for me and if you click trade for me the system will trade completely it will select what kind of stocks that it will trade for you but there are some limitations here you have to understand that brokers do not offer uh, trades in certain stocks they offer certain conditions for certain stocks which they do not have for other stocks like partial trading non-partial trading uh, etc and some stocks uh, especially if they are pink stocks or uh, otc stocks or any of these kind of stocks there will be some fees because it's outside the scope of so there are a few things to solve how to do it but that is the part that I look most forward to do. You wonder, so am I left without any stock uh, tip for the week? Where should I put my money? Well, as I said, if you have a small reaction back in EV, use it. I also saw General Mills looks to me to be a good pick forward. Very exciting to see if Foot Locker will uh, push up has a very nice uh, uh, open uh, range with no resistance above if it really kicks in i think that we can see easy 10 20 percent in foot locker you have to be a little bit careful but there at least are two tips for the week other than that i would again use a relative strength index it's a very good position and if you watch some of the stocks last week moving from low relative strength index position they were do, they were hammering the market there is more to be made and the trading portfolio which i promised you will come next week there will be no podcast simply because tomorrow evening my beautiful kids will come visiting me well they are not kids they are young adults 18 to 20 too soon so my beautiful uh, still have to call them kids uh, will come uh, visiting me here for some 10 days plus and i really look forward to that so i will enjoy that time with them so next monday there will be no podcast and when i return i think maybe that will be the time that we are ready to start up the trading portfolio where i again will tell you uh, exactly which stocks i will buy and sell so you can follow in the meantime you have uh, the shark trader you can watch that you will see when the signals arrive and you will see when they are sold i hope uh, that you because now we are heading for holidays everywhere in most countries and tomorrow will be national day to uh, the americans so uh, on forehand happy 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 national day tomorrow to you american listeners i hope that you will have a splendid day with good food good friends uh, etc and should you be the one uh, who are not surrounded by all the luxury well uh, i will be here and uh, that means that you can reach me uh, on the videos if you comment i will answer and uh, i even sometimes answer on the discord so there is no reason to be totally alone and uh, in just a few weeks i will be back with more news ahead until then i can only wish you a very very good week good holidays and hope that uh, when we speak next time your portfolio is more green than it was today until next time have a good week bye welcome to stockinvest.us stock analysis we remind you that trading involves a high risk of losing money, and that you should speak with a financial advisor before buying or selling.